I said I was so high on the Holy Spirit that I went in the backyard and I, and I cut the weeds. And then the doorbell rang again. Somebody came by with pampers. Y'all ain't hear me yet. Groceries, fruit, and the whole nine. When this happened in one day, I went back to that room that I stretched out at and lost it. Praising God, recognizing that God can do anything. So I wasn't raised to dance in church. I wasn't raised to dance in church. But let that lotto ticket that you found on the floor come in. I said, the one you found on the floor, not the one you bought. I said the one that your co-worker gave to you. I want you to understand that when something happens in your life and you've been praying about it and it happens, it's important to give praise. Sent a picture of, my, of myself to my wife this morning. Because when I get home, there's going to be praising going on. So when I get home, there will be some praising going on. Ah, ah. That's all, gentlemen, that's all. Let me share this before we pray. It's also important to understand that I don't hold back with young people because young people are smarter than us because we, we, ch we choose to blind our eyes. So when I say to young people in a, in a smaller setting that when I go home to be with my wife, I, I like my wife. And I do, I like her. I don't just love her, I like her. And too often, young people don't forge great relationships in the church because you don't see it in church. There have been a church, seriously, when, I, when I'm in church and I'm sitting with my wife, I'll be like this on her. I'll be all in her, snuggling. Something happened funny and trust me, I'd be like, that was so good. <laughs> and if I feel inspired by the Holy Spirit, I tell her, you wait till the sun go down. Sometimes the, sometimes, the, sometimes the sun don't go down. I said, I have an office at church. At church? Sex is worship. With the, with the right, not the right person, the married person. I can't wait to go home. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. You see the only, oh man, I thought you were coming to punch me, bro. Prince, I mean, I mean, he wasn't even walking like a pastor, he was walking like this, my nigga, what's up? I mean, my man, my man, what's up, my man, my man. Woo, Jesus. You ain't no youth director, you a bodyguard. I can see you at the club. Hey, look at every pastor who is not a pastor. If they were not a pastor, there'd be something else. Seriously, is, is President Mackin here? Is he here? Did he come back here? Okay, I won't, I won't use him as an example. 
Um, your, your, your secretary, is he here? Secretary? 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 Oh, you the secretary? <laughs> it's your wife? Because yeah. the way you're holding on to her, bro. Yeah, all right. So if, I'm just saying, if you were not, gonna, if you were not a secretary of a conference, even a pastor or, or whatever, every pastor has this alternate lifestyle if they were in a pastor. That's why we're pastors, so that we'll be safe. Secretary would be like, yo, I'm stealing all the money. I'm stealing all the money. Prince, he'd be a, we we'll call him guy, a bouncer. Can you imagine? Come on in, come on in. God bless you. What you got in your hand? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but your president, I, I kid you not, I know he ain't here, but I'm going to talk about him. He looked like, somebody said it? He looked like the Godfather. <laughs> the black Godfather. He even walk with a little limp. He's on the way, he came up the stairs, came up the stairs like this. He, and he, he didn't look behind because he knew who was behind him. Look. Then he took the mic from Prince like this. He didn't take it. He didn't take it like this. You saw, you saw his, his alter ego came out. He took the mic like this because somebody said something about his organization. My man took the mic like this. Let me fix this. <laughs> and so our young people got to realize that God needs us to be anchored in Jesus. Because without him, where would we be? Father God, we come before you. Thank you for all that you've done for us, for life and strength and the opportunity of praise and worship. But we're asking now that as we look at this word that we hear from you and you alone, and God, as we dig deep, dig deep into what you have to say to us, that no one would leave here the same way they walked in. So we're asking your Holy Spirit to fall afresh on me right now, so that it won't be me, but it'll be you speaking in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen, amen. and amen. Hey, there was a guy that I bumped into earlier today. His suit was crazy. I don't know where you are. You got, you got to be small like me, thin like me. That suit had a little black or blue with a little reddish thing in it, stripes, where are you? I bumped into you, I stopped you about that suit. Where are you? Where are you, my man? Where are you? Where, where is he? I only stopped one guy about his suit. Is he in here? Right where, where, where? Come here, man, come here, hurry up, we ain't got time. Come here, because you look about my height, my size, that suit looked like it fits me. <laughs> yes, sir, yeah, come, 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 come quickly. Come quickly, the time is going and, um, yeah, and he walking like he cool too. Listen, I ain't gay. I said I'm not gay. Brother, you look good. Jesus, man, you take that jacket off, please. See you after the sermon. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. Oh, oh, you'll get it back after sweating and the whole nine. Because I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I have no problem saying this. I look good. Luke chapter 8. I want to share with you this text from Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8 takes us to a place where Jesus is among people and he is um, inundated by people listening to him, hearing him, but he's recognizing that church service is not enough. People gathering together to hear him is not enough. When we look at Luke chapter 8, we find 
that Jesus now is taking care of by women, not the church. My sister, I need you to understand that if God gave you full-time ministry, listen to what I'm saying right now, if God gave you full-time ministry, then God is asking you to rebuke every other work. Because if the church doesn't pick you up, God picked you. And so Jesus, listen Pathfinders, Jesus was walking around and had no place to lay his head, but women took care of him. This is why, I don't care what, how, what, how, what culture you come from, women can work in and for the church. That's one hand right there, and there's two hands right there. And there's a few hands, and I don't see any men's hands, but all right, ladies. Then the Bible tells us specifically that Jesus tells a parable. And when he tells this parable, this parable is about the sower. And I'm asking you just because of time, allow me to speak with you, and I want you to write down some of these texts or go back and fact check your preachers. I mean, if you can fact check Trump, fact check your preachers. And the Bible tells us that Jesus tells a parable of the sower. He says the sower went out to sow. Come on, everybody. The sower went out to sow. And when the sower went out to sow, some fell on good soil. Some fell on rocks. Some fell on thorns. And after Jesus told the story, he made a comment and he said, he that have ears to hear, let him what, everybody? Let him hear. That's almost like the Jamaican mother that said, you can't hear. And when he said this, the Bible tells us that the, that the uh, disciples came to Jesus privately and said to him and asked him, what do you mean by this parable? And then when you see the same story again in Matthew, come on, in Matthew you find the same account. And when you look at the same account, you would see that Jesus then says to them that if you don't understand the parable, then you're not converted. The crowd did not ask Jesus what did he mean by the parables. It was the disciples who asked Jesus, what did you mean by the parable? And Jesus saying, if you've been walking with me for the longest time and don't understand the parable, you're not converted. I declare to you today, that many of us who have come into this place today are doing your due diligence by coming to this service. But not everybody here is converted. I don't even think a lot of us are convicted. I believe that many of us are here today because that's what you do. Jesus wanted to do something different because too many of his young people, too many of the church, you spend a lot of time coming to church and not being the church. A young lady walked into our church one day, a cleavage all the way out. No, I mean all the way. All the way, all the way. Brother came to me, he said, what are we going to do? I said, brother, I got to preach. Just make sure she ain't in the front row. <laughs> it had been a disturbing sermon that day. I would have been talking about the rest of the Sabbath instead of the breast of the Sabbath. It was terrible. But what scared me was not the fact, listen, was not the fact she was a visitor. What scared me was that she was a church member. And some of you may be saying, well, what's the big deal? My thing is that if you're anchored in Christ, you're not going to wear certain things. If you're just going to church, you're going to wear what you wore to the club last night and come here. What I'm trying to tell you is, just because you come to church doesn't mean you're anchored in Jesus. Some of you are anchored in other things, like your phones. Young people, I'm talking to you, I ain't scared of you right now. But I need you to know that if you lost your phones, there are young people who lose their phones or when parents take their phones away from them, they, they, they have anxiety. I grew up on dimes. <laughs> My mom used to tell me, listen, when you go to school, any problem, call me. Here's a dime. 
Anybody remember them days? Or here's a quarter. These days, everybody has a phone. And you're always on it. Like if it was the Bible, you'd be spiritual. And there's certain things I don't understand about cell phones. Because for me, my wife always says, you got the greatest cell phone, but you don't even use it. I said, well, well, I mean, I, I just need to make a phone call. And she's like, this is what you can do with it. And this is what you can do with it. And you know what I do? I said, let's switch. Take the latest one. I'll take the old one. And she's so happy. My kids are like, I need the latest phones. I said, can you get the latest grade? I mean, if we gave away a cell phone to every member, this place will be full, your churches will be full all the time. But I'm telling you that when you see what we're interested in, instead, listen, instead of anchored in Christ, but anchored in the world, you'd be surprised that the reason why we're not excited about church or excited about God is because we're excited about other things. Here we go. I'm going to tell you a couple of months ago, everybody was in to into what's the thorns and the horns and the what's the, what's, what's the, the dragons and the Game of Thrones. So I tried to watch it. I did, I did. My man, the chat. Sure, sure ain't got no pockets on the inside. Y'all see me just now, I was like, must have been Taylor made. bring the pants, bring the pants. And so in this, I was watching Game of Thrones. I saw the first, second, and third episode of the first season. If I'm supposed to stay off of porn, if, I, if I'm supposed to stay off of porn, how can I watch this thing? I'm watching it and it's just like, some of y'all said, but it's just a scene. All it takes is one scene to bring you back into foolishness. I'm going to tell you how Games of Thrones messed me up. I was in a board meeting, we call it a leadership meeting, and someone said something funny in the meeting. And because I watched those three episodes, I, was, I got paranoid. You trying to take over the church? I mean, they said something simple, but because if you fill your minds with some of this thing, it becomes you. And I want you to understand that, that if we're going to be true people of God, young people, you've got to be anchored in him because it is okay. Young people, it's okay to be anchored in Jesus because if you're not anchored in Jesus, you're anchored in someone else. They know in between. And too often, too often, our church, I'm not scared to say this, our church is afraid of our young people today. We're scared if we tell you the truth, you ain't gonna come back. Come back? You got a car? What do you mean come back? If I'm gonna tell you the truth today, many of us don't have a straight relationship with God because you don't see it at your house. How do we expect our children and our young people to follow God if the house is not? I want my child to love Jesus, and you don't. I want my child to be anchored in the Lord, but you're not. And I want to tell you something, parents. Most of the times our children go astray, it's not the church, it's you. Can I tell you a story? Can I tell you a story? I'm going to tell you a quick story. Uh, um, I remember one day I got mad at my wife. Mad! Mad! Like, mad! Yeah. Sitting there arguing with her, arguing with her. And you know, you can't hit her, right? You can't hit her. You can't hit her. And I'm going to tell you why. One day, I was going to hit my wife. I forgot that she was almost a black belt. And I, I'm sorry, gentlemen, it, it's true, this happened. I ran and I ran towards her and, and I was going to get her and in two steps, boom, boom. 
My man, I was, I don't want to do this in your jacket, my man, but I was out on the floor like this. My wife had her knee in my chest, and to make it worse, she started giggling. So this time, when we got into a little argument, I wasn't, I wasn't going to fight. I just started breaking stuff in the house. So I, I'm talking about, I started breaking. I took a chair, broke it, took up the phones, broke it. I was so upset. Let me tell you something. Six years later, I'm driving with my kids in the car in another state, not in the same house, and my kid says to me, Dad, you remember the time you broke the chairs when you was mad at mommy? They remember. Monkey see, monkey do. And I want you to understand that, that here it is that God is talking to his disciples because his disciples don't get it. His disciples are going to church, but they don't see Jesus. His disciples can't get it because his disciples are thinking about their next move, not the move with Christ. And it happens at church all the time. Can I share something with you? I'm going to share something with you. At my church, we don't have nominating committee. One while. We don't have nominating committee. Nominating committee hurts people. We have spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts determine who's going to serve. Not your boy who wants you in office so they can get a cut. Oh, y'all all right? Listen, I want you to understand, I want you to understand that too many people come into, well, I'm, I'm sorry, come into the church because they want an office. You don't want an office in church. It's the worst thing to have. You think I'd ever want to be President Mac? No, sir. President Mac has a wife. He's crazy to have a wife and to be the president. Not me, because everything comes to your desk. Everything goes wrong, and when you fail, I mean, when someone else fails, you fail. You, and church people, ready, are the worst to work for. You, it's true, you, hey man, I see you in a grip, Brian. And I want you to understand, you're unforgiving. Seriously, some of you don't even like the way I preach. Some of you are like, this little man is walking around and saying nothing, because you ain't prayed this morning. Remember, it's youth and young adult. It's not for the old folk who don't want to hear nothing. I want you to understand that many times we mess up as, I'm sorry, we, I'm 50. Young people mess up because you don't have anyone to look at. Churches are empty because you're not offering young people anything. You want it to be the old way. Remember we said last night, you, you, oh, I'm sorry. You want an eight-track church in an iPhone society. Somebody gets pregnant in the church, I'm getting to the text. Somebody gets pregnant in the church, disciples of old want them kicked out because, because you're not a part of the club. I declare to you, there was a woman that came to my church and then she brought her friend. And I, want, I said, come on, come on, I didn't even know. I didn't know they were married. I had no idea they were married. And, then, and, I, and I invited them to be a part of the movement of the church. And they said, yes. Somebody came to me and said, do you know that they were married? I said, I didn't know. So they can't work in the church. I was like, oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. God wants gay people in the church. Okay, hold on a second. Let me talk to the Pathfinders. Pathfinders, Jesus wants gay people in the church. We just don't like people that sin differently from us. Joe, gay people are like the best friends to have. They're cool people. They're cool like you who sin during the week in regular sex. In regular sex, in heterosexual, eh, you know what I'm talking about. So if you get pregnant in the church, the first thing we need to do is hook you up with someone who was pregnant the same way. But many of us forget how we got pregnant. <laughs> Listen, everybody, shh, shh, shh. 
How many people here had children out of wedlock? Say amen. Good, 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 good number, good number. How many people had sex before getting married? Don't say nothing. Somebody wants to say amen. <laughs> we all make mistakes. Every disciple makes mistakes. And young people, I want you to know that your church members and your church forefathers and your pastors, we all make mistakes. Our goal, Brian, our goal is to be anchored, come on now, in Jesus. Because without being anchored in Jesus, the world looks good. Man, I love worldly stuff. I do. The other, I said I love worldly stuff. I do. The other day, me and my wife went to Jamaica, right? I am just went to Jamaica. It was a vacation. I'm on the beach. I'm on the beach. Hallelujah. I'm on the beach. My wife, keep your eye on me, brother. Keep your eye on me. Then this good looking brother walked by. Pecs, taller than me, the whole nine. So keep your eye on me, girl. Wife, my wife was hypocritical. In the church, we're hypocritical. Why? We're hypocritical because we forget that in order tra to transition to the church, we have to come from somewhere. Because you're born in the church doesn't mean you're of the church. Man, I love crazy stuff. I, I still love crazy stuff. So when I'm on the beach and I'm, and I'm looking around, all I say, God, thank you for all the beautiful things that you have made. I also love money. And I want to be honest. God had to humble me and make me a preacher. Because all the preachers in here, y'all don't make nothing. Y'all don't make nothing. Where are my preachers? Y'all don't make a dime. That's why all y'all be talking about, he, he or she trying to steal the money. You'd be like, really? We're trying to get to heaven now. Money. And I want you to understand something, that God knows that you love sin. God knows that you love your stuff. But once you start getting anchored in him, you begin to change. Listen, I don't watch TV anymore. Listen, listen. I just stopped watching TV. I stopped watching TV for about maybe eight, nine years now. So I don't know what's going on. I really don't. Not because I'm spiritual, it's because I'm busy. I'm a busy pastor. The reason why I'm a busy pastor, stay with me now, the reason why I'm a busy pastor is because if I'm not busy doing God's work, I'm doing the devil's work. I know me. One brother came to me the other day in the church said, we're going to go to the club. We're going to go to the club and give out literature. I said, who? <laughs> me? Well, hold on. Where, I, I, th I saw our old friend, Langley. Langley, where are you, Langley? Just, just stand for a second. Just stand, just wave your hand. Don't put the camera on him because I'm about to talk about him. Sit down. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm converted. But you can get unconverted. And I want you to understand that in order, listen, the reason why you're anchored is because when the ship is going and it wants to stay in the right place or one place, it needs to be anchored so it doesn't drift. About do I want to give out literature at the club? No. No, because if that's the club over there and I'm giving out literature, man, praise the Lord, you don't, need to go, you don't need to go in there. You don't need to go in there. Come on, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You don't need to go in there. Don't go in there. Cause the devil's in there. The devil's in there. See me? See me? The devil's in there. Do you don't want to go in there? No, nah, stay away. Stay away. The devil. The devil tell that. Oh, that's my soul. <laughs> Do I want to give out literature? No. Your limits. No, your limits. So when we're looking at the disciples, Jesus is kind of upset a little bit because these men have been walking with him for so long. They've been elders for so long. They've been Sabbath school teachers for so long. And they're still not anchored to him. 
Jesus takes them on a trip. Come on. I'm going to try to do this as quick as I can. Jesus took them on a trip. Listen. And when he takes them on a trip, he takes them on a boat ride. Let me tell you something. I don't like boats. I don't like water. I believe water is to drink and bathe. <laughs> From Brooklyn. There ain't no pools. I mean, there ain't no, you know, there's puddles in Brooklyn. My wife says to me, before I married her, before I went with her, we went to Bermuda on a trip. She stayed in one house, I stayed in the other. <laughs> so she says to me, I want to go snorkeling. And I said to her, I'm not, I'm not going snorkeling. I'm not going snorkeling, I don't snorkel. She said, will you come on the boat ride at least? I said, yes. On the boat ride, we're on the boat, we go to the middle of the, seriously, we go in the middle of the bay, or whatever it is in Bermuda, is the ocean? Right, because there ain't no bays. The ocean. The man says, we're all jumping in now. You see all the people? All the people. All the people. All the people. See him splash? All the people. <laughs> I'm the only one on the boat. My girlfriend at the time is on this raft, and everybody got rafts. They said, mister, you're not going in the water? I said, do I look like? I want to go into the water. She looks at me, listen y'all, she looks at me and she says, come on baby. I said to the man, do you have another raft? The man said, no, but we have a noodle. I said, I want to thank you. She says, come on in, the water is fine. I said, the water is fine. I'm not worried about, worried about the water is fine. Sir, how deep is this water? 20 feet. Take your noodle. <laughs> then she says, for me. <laughs> Sir, can I get that noodle back? <laughs> I jump into the water, 20 feet of water. See me here? <laughs> Dip down and see what you can see. I'm good. And it's amazing what I did for a relationship that I will not do for God. Can I be real about that? Jesus takes his disciples on a trip, Doc. Takes them on a trip. And in the middle of the trip, he says, now, Father, let's do something crazy so these disciples would wake up. A storm hit. And when the storm hits, at this particular time, the disciples are bailing water, bailing water, bailing water while Jesus is sleeping. And I need you to know that sometimes, whoo, Jesus sleeps so you can wake up. What's Chris? I didn't get that answer yet. I'm looking for that answer. I want that answer, Chris. I want that answer. And Jesus, I'm going to sleep. So you wake up. Talking about that, that, that guy, Pat, I'm sorry, that guy don't want me anymore. He doesn't like me anymore. I'm like, that guy don't like you anymore? That guy don't like you anymore? So what? Can I get a commercial? Real quick commercial. Because I'm going to land the plane soon. Quick commercial. If a guy breaks up with you, ladies, if a, if a, if a, a guy, no, man, if you're, if they go, <laughs> let them go. You crying over a brother but not crying over Jesus. You're crying over a sister, but you ain't crying over Jesus. I want you to understand that when Jesus was in the boat with his disciples and the boat is rocking and everybody is trying to bear water, Jesus gets up and speaks to the winds and the waves. He speaks to what he has made and simply says, shut up. Oh, yeah, wait, wait. He didn't say, peace, be still. Don't keep watching TV. My Jesus didn't say, peace, be still. <laughs> Keep watching the TV. The Bible says he rebuked the winds and the waves, which means anybody 
that has ever been rebuked by a parent. I know in my house, there was a rebuke. So, I'm sorry. My brother was, was beating this child, I mean his son. The lady walked up to him and said, how dare you, how dare you, stop it, stop it. I'm gonna call the police. My brother said, if I don't beat him, you'll be calling the police on him. Now I know, I know that some of us have become activists in not beating your kids. I understand, I do understand. Not every child needs a beating. <laughs> but most, And I don't know why the millennials are crying about a spanking. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to call the police. My parents be like, yo, I am the police. <laughs> don't get a little spanking on the behind. Don't talk about, oh, oh, we used to get beat with light wire. <laughs> Come, bring the hanger. Look at some of y'all getting flashbacks. Look at that. Jesus rebuked the winds and the waves. Listen, he said, the Bible says, he says, stop, shut up. And they heard and calmed down because, listen, because the children or the creations heard the creators. Yo, I, listen, I got, I got 25 more minutes. I got 25 more minutes. Some of y'all said I went longer. I got 25 more minutes. Y'all listen to what I'm saying to you right now. Our kids are losing their weight because we think they're cute. You can't spank them because they're cute. If, young people, listen to me. If you are the creations, you better listen to the creators. When I come home and I say to my kids, I need the dishes washed, it's the creator talking to the creations. You ever hear some of these? I remember when I was going, please, if you are a Caucasian among us right now, I, I don't want you to feel any way when I say this. But we remember when we used to tease Caucasian people about the way that they talk to their children? It's you now. I see some black parents. Some are, okay, Johnny, Johnny, don't do that, John. Don't. I'm serious. Go in the corner over there and count. Count! My father would be like, count. One, count. Two, count. Three, count. I remember even at, what number were you at? Come on. And here it is that we didn't go to jail. We didn't grow up killing our kids, but the fact of the matter is, now our kids are killing other, others because we're sparing the rod. Sparing the rod is not just spanking your kids, it's having worship at home. So I'm not about spankings, come on now, but I'm about discipline in the house. Our churches are getting shorter, I'm sorry, smaller and smaller because they don't see church at home. Back at this word, Jesus says, cease. Seco, that's why I believe Jesus was Jamaican. Cease, man, seco, cease. And everything came to a calm. And what they said was, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey. Don't sleep yet. Jesus gets to the other side. Listen, Jesus gets to the other side, and there was a demonic man running towards him. And let me, say, let me share this with you in the interest of time. Stop believing that demonic behavior is your beds floating. I'm a, please, folks, please. Young people, don't sleep. Listen closely. If, if I'm in my room and my bed starts moving and floats up and comes back down, I'm going to be a better Christian. I'm going to start praying every day. Even so, Lord Jesus, quickly come. The devil will never do that to you. I don't even care if you're Haitian. You like that? That whole voodoo stuff? 
Jamaican, what's the other one, Obia? Yo, I'm trying to tell you right now, Satan won't come to you like that. He'll get you a dumb girlfriend. He'll get you through your music. I'm trying to tell you. Can, can, I, can I tell you this? I was coming down here driving. I needed to stay up, so I listened to some music, right? I put a little, the, the big guy that died some years ago, the big guy that died some years ago, the big guy that died some years ago, I was listening to that. The clean version, the clean version. And I remember listening to that music, and it was a two-step. When we was growing up, it was like, oh, snap, oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know what the music is. I'm not coming off on your generation because my parents were like, what's that? When we were listening to that. So I'm not coming off your generation. I'm just trying to understand the mumbling. And my kids, they be in the house like, no, seriously, I'm, I'm not going to do it right. I know I'm not going to do it right. I know I'm not going to do it right. But they, they, they you know. And it's always a, hey, 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 hey. I said to my daughter, what's the words? Hey, hey. Now, they played me out because they listened to my music and said, well, Dad, we got the hey, you got the ho, ho. My age, that, that, that's what it is. But I don't understand the kids today. I don't understand them. So the only way of understanding kids are you ready, South Florida Youth Federation? Is to do activities like this all the time where we're blending with them to understand them. Demons are in our churches today and in our homes today, and they're not gonna show their thorns because if they do, our kids will be Christians. Yeah. So we gave you Netflix. We got you binging on episodes instead of binging on Genesis. I've never seen young people binge on stuff like that. They would binge, get up in the middle of the night and binge, 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 and, and, and we can't even have a week of prayer anymore. We're upset with um, old time, I'm, I'm upset, old time preachers. Six weeks we used to do evangelism in a tent. Six weeks! And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm scared of our new preachers today who never went call portering, never did a tent effort. I'm scared of them preachers and, and our new preachers who don't know prophecy. We just want you to feel good in church. And then after you feel good, you leave and get felt good. I want to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now, Demonic stuff is happening in our homes, and we can't see it because if you're anchored in Jesus, he'll show you. There are people here are in relationships, and your, and your man is not Adventist or a Christian, or you may be an Adventist but not a Christian. And they pull you further and further away. Anybody here want to get married one day, say amen. amen. Go to prayer meeting. <laughs> I'm almost done. Go to prayer meeting. At my church, I know I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, at my church, some of the millennials got together and said, we don't want to have prayer meeting, we'll, we'll do it on our own. I was like, really? I got outvoted. I got outvoted. I got outvoted. I got, the pastor got outvoted. That's why I missed the old days when we were in charge. I want that red. I like that blue. That's the old school. I hate this carpet. Pick it up. <laughs> my mother's generation will hear the pastor and be like, you know, hear the pastor? You know, hear the pastor? This generation, when the pastor talk, the millennials be like, no, God, please. And I'm telling you, I miss those days when a pastor will, uh, will call out demonic stuff. But now we don't do it because we don't want you to leave. Some of the clothing we wear is demonic. The music you listen to is demonic. Some churches, Kanye, <coughs> some churches... You sit there and believe Kanye's a church and whatnot. Sit there and believe that. I mean, I mean, I, I don't even gotta read it to know that the devil knows 
how to play games. I'm not judging him. I'm not judging him, but by your fruits. I'm almost done. Some of y'all in the balcony talking about hurry up, Pastor, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to tell you. So, so demons, demons will move to make sure you're not saved or anchored. I was dating this girl years ago, years ago, years ago, long time ago, long time ago, long time ago. She was not Adventist. I was a pastor. I was a pastor dating this young lady. Do y'all know you hear me yet? And man, she used to come to church with her earrings on and the whole nine, and I would walk in, one of my first churches would walk in with her, and my deacons would say, yo, my man, this is not right. And I'd be like, man, I got this. My elder would show up and be like, hey, listen, this is not right. So I decided, I'd say, look, hon, let me baptize you. If I baptize you, it'll shut everybody up. One day, I had a one-on-one -on -one with God. I said, Lord, Lord, if you want this relationship to be over, she gonna call me and tell me it's done. I'm flying up in God's face because I know she ain't leaving me. <laughs> she ain't leaving me. You don't know how good I am. <laughs> she ain't going nowhere. And I get a call at two o'clock in the morning. It's over. I said, why? Because I'm not good for your ministry. Sometimes we love demonic stuff in our lives so much we can't tell the difference. And when the anchor steps in, you've got to listen. Demon, listen, demonic behavior is not frothing from the mouth. No, it's, it's people who want to shut down ministries because there's no money. That's what Ellen White says. And so I want you to understand that we're, we're worried about jewelry, but not the jewels. Worried about getting a church service on time, but there's no spirit worship. What about our young people? And like I said last night, but I can elaborate, that a young person came to me and said, why do you have to wear a tie, Pastor? And they did the research and found out that the tie is an ornament like, <laughs> like a chain around your neck. They'll catch us. The millennials, are they hot, man, they hot. So you can no longer tell them, we don't go to the movies. Why not? I mean, I got a big screen in front of my house. I mean, in my house. I watch the same things. You can't fool millennials or Gen Xers. That's why you got to teach them to be anchored. Jesus then leaves after asking the demons to go. And remember the conversation that Jesus had with the demons. Which one are you? We're legion for we are many. Let me tell you something. Jesus is so humble, it couldn't be me. I'd have been like, go! And don't come back. Them demons said, can we go into the pigs? And Jesus said, you may. That's how humble Jesus is. He goes back, and when he goes back, the conference president, this is why I want to use this, I always use this as an example. Conference president comes and says, my daughter is sick unto death. I need you to come to my house. He's inviting Jesus to his house because you will do anything for your kids. Now, I'm going to say this right now, and the kids, you may not like this. Young people, you may not like it, but I'm going to tell you this right now. Your parents love you. They love you so much, they'll do anything for you. Just the same way God will do anything for you. You ever hear young people complain about their parents? I can't stand my parents. They put, your mama pushed you out. Oh, wow, three. Man. Let me use this and then I'm gonna land a plane. Get ready, fellas. Listen closely. The, 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 <laughs> my son disobeyed me the other day. Just disobeyed me. Clean your room, boy. Clean your room. I said, what? So I decided not to punch him in his mouth. I said, I decided not to. I decided to have a conversation with him, and this is how the conversation went. I said, son, <laughs> I'm fixing it up for you, so you'll invite me back. I said, I'm not taking your phone from you. <laughs> well, hold on. Well, 
Not, not yet, bro. <laughs> Sister, you told him to do that? So I said to my son, son, I'm not going to take your phone from you. He said, really? I said, no, I'm just going to sever my relationship with you. He said, what? I'm not going to take your phone from you. I'm going to take my relationship from you. And I've never seen him feel so hurt before. Because if I keep taking the phone from him, he's going to do something based on getting a phone back. But if I say to him, you want to come and have a conversation, you're not going to be with me. You want to watch TV together, it's not going to be with me. When I go to McDonald's, I mean Chick-fil-A, it's not going to be with you. And he wised up because he didn't want my relationship with him to be severed. Here it is that Jesus is walking, and while he's walking, he's going to Jairus' house, and while he's walking, someone stops him by touching the hem of his garment. He's going to heal someone, and someone touches him by the hem of his garment, and he turns around and says, who touched me? And when he finishes the conversation, he keeps on going, and when he gets almost there, someone comes and says, your daughter is dead. In the meantime, the disciples are wondering what's going on, what's happening here. Jesus is about to do something that hopefully will anchor his disciples. He gets, listen closely, he gets to the house and he takes Peter, James, and John inside of the house with him. Peter can cuss like anybody else. James and John are the sons of thunder, not because of their preaching, but because of their gossiping. Y'all ain't with me. He takes the, seems like he takes the three worst to bring them in. And I want you to understand, just because you go to church, put that back up, just because you go to church doesn't mean, and you call yourself a disciple, doesn't mean you got it together. Judas had the best pastor, had the best leader, had the best what, everybody? advisor, had the best what? Counselor, yet he failed. Listen, the problem is not the leadership or the church you go to. If your attitude or character doesn't change or your heart doesn't transform, you will always be the same. If you're anchored in Jesus, you got to change. And now go to, the, go to the other one. And now as you go to the other one, I want you to understand that when Jesus got into the house, the girl was dead like some of you. She was dead. Keep it right there. She was dead. And the ladies are saying to Jesus, she's not sleeping. She's dead. I look at some of our young people right now. If you're not having a great time in church, you're dead. If you don't get what you want, you're dead. If you don't get the music you want in church, you're dead. Church is not dead. If the church are the people and church is dead, then you're dead. And a lot of times we bring our stuff to church hoping that the preacher says something to get it together. And the truth of the matter is you keep repeating your foolishness because you don't want to repair it. Because you know if you repair it, life's got to change. We're almost there. We're almost there. Jesus walks in. When Jesus walks in that room, he puts people out. He tells the people who do not have faith to leave. Listen closely. Peter, James, and John walks in. Jesus looks at the little girl <laughs> and speaks life into her. He speaks life into her because she was dead. He speaks life. And when he says, little girl, it's time to get up, death moved out of the way. Mm -hmm. The little girl got up.
And let me tell you what excited me about this whole thing was remember why Jesus took them on the water. Remember why Jesus took them uh, to see the demon. Remember why Jesus had the woman touch the hem of his garment. Because his disciples were just churchgoers. If you look at chapter 9, you would find that now they began to do the work that they were supposed to do. But even more than that, according to the spirit of prophecy, that the disciples did not get it together until Jesus rose. Which means, how do we expect to make it into the kingdom if we're not anchored to Jesus? I declare right now that many of us are anchored to relationships we're anchored to the TV, we're anchored to Netflix, we're anchored to our phones, and we're not anchored to Jesus. Today is your chance. <laughs> Today is your chance to be anchored in him, but you can't go back to the life you were living before. I want to share this story. My car has not been working. I got this old van, it's an Odyssey, 2007. My battery kept going out. <laughs> I, I need you to know that my battery kept going out, so I, I kept driving around with the, with the jumper cables in my passenger seat. It, it had a problem starting. But when it started, there was no problems. If I could just get it started in the mornings or if I stop at a store or something, just if somebody can help me. My parents said, buy a new car. I said, nah, nah, this is gonna work right now, it's paid for. So I, I thought I needed a new battery. So I went down and was getting a new battery and found out that I have a warranty on my old one. And when I went in to get it, the man came out and tested the battery and said, there's nothing wrong with this battery. <laughs> so I said, listen, my man, I've been driving for the longest time. I know cars, this battery, is something wrong with this battery. He said, don't worry about it. I just tested it. I just tested you. I just tested it. I just tested you. I just tested it. I just tested you. God knows that this battery is still working. Now I want you to understand that because it needed help to start, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. I'm sorry, the battery. It just needs an anchor. You said what? Your battery needs an anchor. What, what do you mean? First of all, you need to tighten it up. Because every time you move it, come on now, the cables keep moving. Tighten it up, prayer. Tighten it up, worship. Tighten it up, come on now. The man took the tool. He began to tighten my battery. He tried to start it again and said, now I know what the problem is. He goes inside, comes out with a nail. He took the nail and put it between the terminals. Some of the ladies are looking at me like, whatever. Somebody said, it works like a charm. He said, sir, you don't need to buy a new battery. You don't need to spend any more money on this. All you need to do is take the nail, put it in, put it into the connector, and it'll work. I said, well, what are you saying? He said, all you need is a nail. to put between the terminals. The car is not starting because your terminal is widened because it wasn't anchored. Now that it's anchored, you're now gonna need a nail between the terminal so it will keep the connection 2,000 years ago. God knows that some of us will lose our anchor with him. 
but he took a nail. He took another nail. He took a nail so that our connection with him will not fail. You see, the devil knows that once you're connected with Jesus, you can ride the rest of the way. I declare to you today, accept the nails in his hands. Accept the nails in his feet so you can stay connected to Jesus Christ. You need to be anchored in him. And I declare today, we need to get rid of the stuff in our lives that we're anchored in. And I share this with you simply because God has offered the nail so you'll keep the connection. I know we ain't got a lot of time. I believe there's someone here that's not anchored to Jesus, but anchored to something else. Please don't take this the wrong way. I want to pray the hell out of you. I want to pray that that brother you're holding on to, that sister you're holding on to, that weed that you like, I said that weed that you like, that you get a taste for something different. We're talking about being anchored in Jesus. That means every decision you make, everything that you do, it's all about Jesus. So I'm going to ask, this is how we're going to start. Listen, all those who are in the balcony, just those who are in the balcony, you feel that you need to be anchored in Jesus and you're not, but you need to be anchored in Jesus. I'm going to ask you to disrupt this place and come down for your prayer right now. God, I'm talking about a special prayer. We're talking about God saying to you, Tell me what you want me to get rid of in your life, and I'll get rid of it. You gotta be ready for it. I'm gonna ask you to move right now. Listen, I'm trying to tell you right now that if you're anchored in something else, you can't be anchored in Jesus. Please, let me give you this. I love, listen, I love my wife. I love her to death. She asked me the question, what would make us divorce? I said, nothing. What would make us divorce? Nothing. She said, what would make us divorce if you love somebody else? That, that, that's my answer. I'm not talking about cheating because everybody here has been cheating on Jesus. I'm talking about if you love somebody else, then I love you enough for you to go. You know, Jesus loves us so much that if you love some, something else, he'll just say, go ahead. But I want you to understand, come on now, I want you to understand that Jesus loves you so much, so much, that he's willing to help you get rid of what's been anchoring you. Now, bottom floor, if there's someone here who wants to pray right now that you will be anchored in him alone, slip out of your seat slip out of your seat and come down for your prayer right now that will keep you anchored in Jesus. You know, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the prayer that says, help me to hold on. I'm talking about the prayer that says, help me to let go. The prayer that says, it's about you now, Lord. The prayer that says, I'm getting rid of him. The prayer that says, I'm getting rid of it. The prayer that says, I'm giving you my life right now, God. If that person is you, come on, get up, move, move, move. Come on, move. You gotta prioritize anchoring yourself to Jesus. <laughs> oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Listen, I want you to know when we pray over your life, you can't go back. Cannot go back. If you're in the balcony, move. Move. If you're in the overflow across, move. I don't want to be a disciple that's anchored in the world. I want to be a disciple that's anchored in Jesus. Just move. Just move. 
Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Oh, young people, don't just sit there. Don't just sit there, young people. Just move, move. Don't be afraid to change your life. Don't be afraid to be anchored in Jesus. Oh, mercy. Is there another? Just move. Some people are saying, I'm not getting up because I know I'm going to return to my foolishness. All you got is today. been planning some stuff. I'm praying, uh, I'm praying sabotage over your plans. Man, I want, <laughs> I want on my Instagram that you, that you send me a message and said he left me. Yeah. I want you to post later on that I got that job. I want you to post and say that habit that I had is done. I'm now anchored in Jesus. As we pray this prayer, God will deliver. And then the second prayer I want to pray is that when you leave here, whatever you've been holding on to, that you've been forgiven. You've been forgiven. It's over. You got to anchor in Jesus. You can grab the hand of somebody next to you. Grab the hand of somebody next to you. Give us a guy, grab his hand too. 